Guys, before this video starts, I want to tell you about this sick website that sells hella cheap NBA jerseys. The website is ringchasers.com. I copped myself a few jerseys on there a while back, and I honestly don't know how their prices are this cheap. If you guys want to get a sick deal on a jersey, make sure you check them out. Link will be in the description, and use code LQG at checkout for an extra 10% off. What's going on guys, it's LQG, and today I'm back with another video. So today we have for you guys NBA Legends explain how good Hakeem Olajuwon was. Now I already did one on Dennis Rodman and Allen Iverson, and those will be linked below so you can check those out after this video if you would like. But before we get into this video, make sure you guys smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch all the new content. We are releasing daily videos, so make sure you don't miss out. And with that being said, let's get into NBA Legends explain how good Hakeem Olajuwon was. Action right side of the move, swings it outside to Curitan, into Jordan, Michael in deep, scoop pass, tipped out of bounds by Houston. The Bulls get the ball with 13 to shoot. He feels. Jackson turning in the dribble, in from the left side, kicks to Jordan in the left corner. Michael in the move against McCray, in from the left, lays it high. Blocked inside, Elijah Wan, no goals! Pax works into the left corner, Jordan has it left in the circle. Michael in from the left side, lays it up, blocked, no goals! That came a lot to him. I got no chance of losing, none at all. Elijah Wan, he was in the top ten in five categories. Steals, rebounds, block shots, scoring and shooting percentage. You know what I mean? To have a big guy of his size to be in the top 10 in steals. Now you can assume that he would be in blocks, which to me shows versatility of what type of guy he really was. I'm sure he's your favorite, the dream. Yeah, the dream was my favorite because personal reasons. And the reason was he was a guy that I couldn't break. You know, uh, all, all, all the other great centers, I was able to get into their heads a little bit. And that was just my way of, of trying to compete. You know, every, every young guy that comes up, you know, always put it in, always put it in basic karate movie format. You know, you got the old guy in the white beard, which is me now. You got the old guy in the white beard. Shaq Fu. Yeah, Shaq Fu. But then you got the young guy that's coming up. So in order for you to be the master, you have to beat the master. So, I mean, I always knew this Patrick Ewan and Akeem and, and Chief, I always knew these guys were 100 times better than me, but I didn't want them to know that. And then I wanted their spot. So you know, I wanted their spot. So the five best things, I'm, I'm glad you, you have, I have to write them down. Akeem to me is, is number one. But why couldn't you break him? Because I couldn't get into his head. I remember one time I gave him a bow, and he just laughed. <laughs> nice, nice, nice elbow, brother. And then he came out and gave me a <laughs> and, and shout out. Crazy fedor, yeah, he gave me one of them. So the next time I, I, I came out, I dunked on him, and I looked at him in, like, okay, good one, and he just came out, you shoot, and he gave it to me again. So he was, he was my favorite. When we were watching that video coming into the segment, uh, when they showed that dream shake against David Robinson, mm. which is the one that, I mean, you guys, everybody's shaking their head, and everybody goes, woo, and I mean, what do you, when you see a big man with those, with those kind of moves and that fluid, what did you think? I think about two things. I think, one, the fact that he made that move because you thought he was going to do the jump hook. Because he can hit you with the basic move. He has basic moves. So you have to be really good, basically, first to add everything else. And then when he hits you with the left shoulder or right turn, you know, we uh, the playoffs, uh, fresh uh, rookie year, you know, you get a book of what type of moves every guy like. He go 40% over shoulder. Hakeem, it was nothing but on this side, he may go left, he may go right. And he was the only guy ever in the NBA that was my height and a center that you had to move your feet when he in front of you. Akeem, Akeem just didn't have that, that uh, the, the um, shake on the baseline. He would get you at the free throw line, give you a little step-to-step -step dribble, and you wouldn't know what to do as a big guy. You're looking to guards, you know, for help. And Akeem wasn't that big. That's all. When I saw him, I was like, okay, he's not that big. And to be, every time he's blocking shots, elbow over the rim or the jump shots, his game to me was just... It was just so versatile. It, it's funny, you talk about elbows to the rim and that big. He, he said to me one time, he's like, Kenny, I'm really sorry. I'm like, why are you sorry? He said, because sometimes you set out practice and you say you have this thing called tendonitis. I'm like, yeah, you know. He said, I have it. It feels like a headache in your knee. This was 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> into, into, he had never had tendonitis. Right, right. He never knew what that was. So I'm like, right. so yeah, I said, dream, my name, I got, I got migraines so <laughs> days. Right. You know, as, as a guard, that was the first big man that I started asking tape for. Because I wanted to see his footwork. I mean, one thing, Kenny, I could say, watching him in the layup line, him handling the basketball, he has spin moves. 
So I'm thinking, you know, big guys, where does he get this from? But then also talking to Jim Boylan, who was the kind of assistant coach who was doing video for y'all, I was always asking him, he said the biggest thing about Akeem was his counters. You know, everything a defensive had was his counter. So for me, trying to post up, I'm trying to learn all the counters. Unbelievable, phenomenal to try to pattern your foot, footwork as a king. I couldn't do it because this, this is a guy that the footwork, it seemed like it was just fluent. It was something off of feel versus everybody trying to break it down. Look, I agree with everyone here on the panel. I would go with Hakeem Olajuwon out of the two. Houston. Toughest matchup for you during your NBA career? Hakeem Olajuwon. How come? Just so athletic? Athletic, quick, a dream shape. And you got to make the adjustment. Explain to folks who might not, again, be some of the young folks, what made Dream so special? So, first of all, do everybody know who Hakeem Olajuwon is? You know, this guy's footwork was some of the most amazing footwork you ever see. But his tenacity in the gym, I mean, like, you think he was mad during the game. He was even madder during practice if the guys wasn't practicing hard or he felt like we weren't putting up, putting forth the maximum effort. And that's what you want out of guys. You just want to come to practice and play hard because if you go really, really hard in practice, sometimes it's easier in the game because in practice, you don't have timeouts. In the game, you have timeouts, you have TV timeouts, but it goes to show you how great this guy was. I, I, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon is Muslim. And so during Ramadan, he's not allowed to drink or eat anything. So we had a noon game. And so you can't eat or drink anything through, through, uh, until sundown. This guy still puts up 40 points, doesn't drink any water, doesn't have a meal before the game to get itself right. That lets you know how amazing this goes. And if you ask Michael Jordan what one guy he ever feared, it was Akeem Olajuwon. He, he used to call and say, I'm scared of the big African because he's from Nigeria. That's what he used to say because, you know, and the people out who are Chicago Bulls fans, I know this question comes up a lot. They always wonder those two championships we won in Houston, would we have won them with Michael Jordan would have been playing? The answer to that question is yes, because they couldn't stop Olajuwon. We might not be able to stop Jordan, but they couldn't stop Olajuwon. We did have a guy that could kind of slow Jordan down and Vernon Maxwell. So before that question ever pops up, yes, we'd have won two <laughs> championships if Jordan would have played. Once again to Olajuwon. A strong man open, but he's playing the same side and they get the same effect. And that's exactly what happened. Olajuwon with the head fake. What a move by Hakeem Olajuwon. He wants the alley-oop. He's already posted up. Goes right side Chambers. Oh, Olajuwon. And you can turn that into a positive. And of course, he has the quick base quarter. And you can see they're out early, the red shirts. Olajuwon's baseline jump hook. Olajuwon. Spinning on Donaldson and the fall away. And that's six. Expanding second quarter. Mason now back to guarding Olajuwon. And a key able to hit. Charles Smith on Olajuwon. And now Mason, as Mace forces him to take this off the wrong foot. But Olajuwon's starting to warm up. For second. I know how you are. How many white shirts get around allowed you on that time? Bang it! Nuggets defense is better, Walt, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's much better than... Elijah on now, facing the basket. Look at that move. Was that pretty? That was beautiful. Here's a matchup they like. Elijah on trying to get Donaldson up. Takes it to the hole! Rockets, Hakeem Elijah on. Great pass. Crossover drills. He has scored and he has dished. Elijah, oh, right oh, around oh. Parrish, you don't oh. see that kind of move made every day. So that's it for this video guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you do leave a like if you did enjoy, and also subscribe to the channel to catch all the new content. We are releasing daily videos, so you definitely don't want to miss out. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.